the Manchester United side and the players that died will never ever be forgotten in the city. It was a drab and it was a, a gruesome place, but the one shining light was the Manchester United football team and particularly the young players, the Busby babes that Sir Matt Busby had nurtured and had brought onto the world stage. Roger Byrne was the captain, who was a man of great authority, um, a man of wonderful ability, very fast, an England international. Jeff Bent uh, and Eddie Coleman, two Salford lads. Jeff Bent, a left-footed player, played mostly in the reserves, didn't get a lot of opportunity in the first team, but a really, really tough tackler. Little Eddie Coleman, 20 United people of that era will remember they used to call him Swivel Hips because he loved to shimmy, he loved to go the direction that other people didn't think he was going to go to. He's a marvellous young player. Three Yorkshire lads from mining backgrounds, Mark Jones, David Pegg and Tommy Taylor, came from Doncaster, Barnsley and Doddeth, uh, respectively, in Yorkshire. And they had the grit and had the determination to become players. That was their aim and that was their achievement, if they could make it to make the mark in the game. Well, they certainly did that. Mark Jones, a very old head and a very, very much a father figure to any of the young players that were there at the particular time, but a really strong and a tough man. David Pegg, who was a left-footed player, I think he, he played very rarely for England, but nevertheless had a wonderful future. Tommy Taylor, the current at that particular time international centre forward, who everybody remembers for his great physique, his wonderful mobility, and also his great ability in scoring with his head. Uh, the Irish were represented by Liam Whelan. Um, Billy Whelan, we called him. Uh, he was from Dublin. He was a marvellous playmaker. He had a terrific ability with the ball. He was able to create goals. He was able to score goals. And, and finally, of the ones that died and didn't come back from Munich, Duncan Edwards, who was the greatest player that I ever played against. He had the strength, he had the desire, and he had the ability of 10 men. He was a real giant. We had great staff, Walter Crickmer, Tom Curry, and Bert Wally, three people from background who actually made Manchester United that little bit of something special. I would just like to say to all the, the relatives, um, that everyone in the game of football has the greatest respect and gratitude for what these players did.
on Sunday, May the 18th, 1997, just six days before his 31st birthday and barely two weeks after clinching his fourth league title with United, Eric Cantona stunned his beloved fans by announcing his retirement from the game. In his four and a half seasons at the club, he helped them win four league titles, including two doubles. Indeed, it was his goal against Liverpool in the 1996 FA Cup final, which confirmed their second double and enabled he himself as captain to lift the cup at Wembley. Monsieur Fantastique takes his place in the International eleven, which bears many famous names playing at home and abroad. There are inevitably several Frenchmen in the side who recognise immediately the likes of Jean-Pierre Papin and of course Laurent Blanc who helped France to the World Cup. There's a former United legend Mark Hughes and Eric's brother Joel. All these players have given up their earnings in the cause of the Munich Memorial Fund. Today's proud owner of the number seven shirt is equally adored and equally capable of winning matches. David Beckham is simply loved by the United fans who will be backing him this season, perhaps more than ever. Let's hope that those who feel the need to jeer this most gifted of young stars will soon become bored of this tiresome pastime. Alex Ferguson promised a strong lineup and he's true to his word. One has definitely been selected. Only the names of 20-year-old keeper Nick Culkin, who deputises for Peter Schmeichel, and Wes Brown at centre-half may be unfamiliar to you. United are without their Scandinavian contingent, all on international duty, while Jarp Stam and Jesper Blomqvist are getting back to full fitness. Otherwise, it's a familiar feel, with Ryan Giggs and Paul Scholes assisting Teddy Sheringham up front. in charge but perhaps without too much to do other than smile a few times is Roger Dix. Well it's underway there's been so much talk about it of course cancelled last February due to an FA Cup replay of all things and uh, these friendly occasions are normally difficult to know how to judge but Lou Macari alongside me how do you play this one? Well, I've never known such an atmosphere, Alistair, at Old Trafford. I was here 11 years. I never experienced this. How do you play it? There's players will be out there tonight, people like Roy Keane. He'll be grateful for the game. You know, he's missed the, the whole of last season. I think be, the game itself will be played in a good atmosphere, a friendly atmosphere, and there'll be plenty of goals, I'm sure. Well, there's the promise of plenty of goals, and there's certainly plenty of talent to try and provide it, not least of all uh, Paul Gascoigne, of course, who uh, you might just notice there, just losing out possession. Nicky Butt coming away with the ball for Manchester United. But uh, if you think that normally there is a little segregation here, Alex Ferguson's men will be buoyed by an entire 55,000 of Man United fans tonight. It should be one heck of a noise. Eric Cantona, there was talk of him playing for both sides tonight. Perhaps at half time we'll get confirmation that he'll switch and uh, don that famous red number seven. At the moment, the, the red shirts are on the back feet. And uh, the international 11 through Martin Darlene has forced a corner. Blackburn Rovers centre forward, Swedish international, trying to get his own match fitness back, and he almost opened the scoring. Paul Gascoigne waiting, hovering. Remember all these players here just to be a part of this occasion, giving up their time free of charge in the name of the Munich Fund. And uh, I think that says a great deal about the affection that this club and, of course, Eric Cantona is held. But it's a night to be a Manchester United supporter. No question about that. And they're going to enjoy all the French songs, the Ouar Cantona, the French national anthem, which many of the international team will uh, be pleased to hear sung. Here's Beckham. Now Gary Neville. And the challenge was from uh, you know who. Inevitably wearing number seven, getting a huge round of applause for his first touch. Sweetly timed tackle. You don't normally expect him in that position, but uh, it wasn't bad, was it, Luke? Well, it's been a fierce start, I think, to this game. I mean, both sides are really going for it. They know what the crowd want tonight. They want goals. They want entertainment. And I think they want United to win. <laughs> Mind you, if Eric Cantona was to pop up with a hat trick for the international All Stars, I don't think the United fans would be too bothered.
Here's David Beckham. Now Scott. Challenge on the edge of the area. Sheringham trying to uh, release the vice like grip that had come the United's way. Scholes almost controlling it, but not quite. Mark Hughes on the chase. Huge cries of Hughesy from the fans who adore him just as much as Cantona in many respects. And here is Eric Cantona. Are we to get our little moment of joy in the opening minutes? Not quite. Now the roar of approval uh, would have probably been greater than if it would have been the winning goal in the possibly the cup final itself, but he lost out. Too many men around him. Giggs looking for and uh, just about finding Paul Scholes. There is Butt combining with Scholes, but again. Sharing a nice play, nice link up with Ryan Giggs, who is indeed on that left hand side. The header was a good one as well. A little bit of pushing against Gary Neville was the verdict from the referee, but uh, Neville still went in there. And as Lou was saying before, he loves to see Giggs providing the ammunition from the left, and that's the danger he can provide. Well, he was very impressive against the poles, as I said, Alistair, but I felt the opposition that night contributed to Ryan being outstanding because they didn't have a player in the team that could tackle. They were, they were non-aggressive side, and I felt on the night, Giggs, as well as he played, I think you had to take into consideration the opposition. And I believe on Saturday against Leicester, against a more robust side, he didn't play as well as he did three nights earlier. Here's Beckham. Oh, he might try the chip, he does, and it wasn't all that far off. Audacious attempt. Uh, I'm falling into my own trap here. Cantonesque style, that little chip. And if anyone can provide those deft little touches, those little moments of inspiration, Beckham surely is he. Well, I was glad to see him score on Saturday. He's taken so much abuse since the World Cup, and I can't really understand it. You would think that he contributed mainly to England not winning the World Cup. He only played a little part in getting sent off. He didn't miss any penalty kicks, but the abuse he's taken since the start of this season and will continue to take, I'm afraid, is quite astonishing. Well, it's a debate that has uh, unfortunately dogged the last month or two, and uh, one wonders in many respects just exactly uh, who was to blame and uh, surely the reason that Manchester, uh, sorry, that uh, England were rejected was not because of one man's little rush of blood to the head. Anyway, here's Ryan Giggs, little chip in towards Scholes was just too far. But they've at least won a corner, Laurent Blanc, who did indeed uh, win the World Cup, perhaps holds the secrets to why a team does or doesn't do so. Ryan Giggs is enjoying this evening. He played a lovely little teasing ball, headed away by Blanc. for but to drill one in a tangle inside the penalty area but uh, Laurent Blanc comes away with the ball looking for Gascoigne Darlene trying to get involved Gary Neville the offside flags raised unfortunately but uh, going back to that debate Lou uh, to blame one man for anything let alone the ejection of a team from a competition I mean <laughs> How on earth does that actually have any foundation? Absolutely outrageous. No one fancied England before they went to the World Cup to win it. As a matter of fact, people were saying they'd be the first team back home. That, that was even in front of Scotland, may I add. People were saying <laughs> you would say that. they'd be back home before Scotland. And then all of a sudden, they put up a good performance against Argentina, and, be, and then they get knocked out, and they blame that poor lad who's now on the ball. Well, let's see if he can uh, give you another reason why he's a gifted player. He can, providing Ryan Giggs with the opening goal. And uh, that's, I think, just one of the reasons why David Beckham, I'm sure, will have the character to ride any of the jeers that he takes, on, particularly on the away grounds. Found the space, got the ball, looked up, and when David Beckham's got time to pick out a man, he'll always find one. Well, that's another reason why he gets stick at away grounds, because he's such a talented player. He has such an effect on the game, and this is a typical example of David Beckham at his best. Looks up, lovely floated ball to the back post, and there was Ryan Giggs in a position which I prefer him, smashing the ball into the back of the net. Well, we've waited 13 and a half minutes or thereabouts, and at last we have our goal through Ryan Giggs. Incidentally, uh, the goalkeeper you're now witnessing has a reputation for being... Uh, Positive. 
Well, it's a friendly. Why not? Pascal Almeida oh. almost contributing to the second goal. The ball didn't cross the line from uh, a wry smiling Paul Scholes. And uh, Almeida, at the age of 37, has a reputation well deserved. As too does Paul Gascoigne, who almost found a way through the United back line. And uh, Vahir Wah almost providing an equaliser. But uh, Pascal Almeida, he's uh, a terrific character. Uh, one of those players who uh, I think many goalkeepers have had it. I can think of what Kiroga springs to mind. Uh, sensational skills once they get out of the penalty area. <laughs> Well, the way he beat everyone there, Alex Ferguson could put his checkbook away. You know, 12 million for Dwight York, whatever it is. I think the solution's there. Sheringham displays the awareness of knowing where Giggs was. And a fabulous tackle by Brian Robson. Oh. Well, Lou, you played alongside Brian Robson. I know you hold him in uh, great esteem. Well, I'd never seen such a player coming to Old Trafford with such power, such pace. Right throughout his career, I mean, he had injury after injury. He came back from those injuries and he played, as I said, he was Captain Marvel. Every day at training, put the effort in during the games. There's been no better player in that midfield at Old Trafford for me in the last 20 years than Brian Robson. Sheringham's in the middle and he almost found him and that was almost an own goal I think of Laurent Blanc it was Robson in fact well you said he knew where the net was Louis nearly found it there well when he was at his best this would have ended up in the back of the net as a matter of fact I think he was trying to put it in the back of the net <laughs> well perhaps he'll uh, have been a little bit more pleased when I named him as Laurent Blanc then. oh a good touch by Pat well, there's that finishing we were talking about almost out of nothing what a lovely finish the instinctive move to the near post gained himself half a yard and the ball ends up in the back of the Manchester United net certainly does good education for Wes Brown very early on in his career he took his eyes off Papa and he was in there next thing in the back of the net what a fabulous finish that was. As you say, Wes Brown will learn plenty from this. He thought he had him man-marked. No such thing with Papa. Now, can United bounce straight back into the lead again? Not quite. Here's Gascoigne, that fan away to the right-hand side, Gascoigne thinking about going alone, he's done so, magic from Gascoigne, what's the finish like, we're not going to see, a fabulous tackle, well, I'll leave it to you Lou, because uh, I know who it was who made that, I'm sure you do too, Wes Brown again, oh well, hang on, let's just watch Old Mater, but we can't get anything in with Old Mater on the field, but uh, it was a super challenge by Wes Brown at the other end. Certainly was Alistair Gascoigne showing all his old magic and craft, wriggling his way through. Wes Brown at the death stopped him. Must be a terrific night for Wes Brown. I, I doubt he'll ever forget this night as long as he lives. It's uh, surrounded by some of the world's greats. 55,000 Manchester United fans with smiles on their faces and Cantona doing his tricks. What more could you want as a United player? Wes Brown will remember this in particular Gascoigne was showing the skills selling the dummies weaving his way through out of your picture now now in it that's fantastic I don't think he would have caught him a few years ago though I think Gascoigne would have been in in goals ball in the back of the net well, he's uh, laid it up for Laurent Blanc to have a go and, well, it wasn't just a crack on target it was in the corner that's a fabulous goal from Laurent Blanc warmly applauded by the Manchester United fans Gascoigne teed him up and Blanc finished it off well they gave the young goalkeeper Nicky Colgan no chance right in the corner no goalkeeper in the world would have saved that well, the, the bend on that was quite prodigious and uh, with players in front of the goalkeeper's view he had no chance sympathy for Nick Culkin uh, both goals that have gone past him nothing to do with him 
Cantona, Gascoigne. Good skills from Gascoigne. Cantona. Oh, I thought he was shaping up for a little chip there, but uh, it wasn't to be. And Giggs can break. And he sends Scholes scurrying. Sheringham's gone forward. Giggs is there too. Beckham on the far. Keane just in front of him. Teed up instead for Butt. Met it well. Good save by Pascal Almeida. Well, we joked about him earlier, but that was quality. And there he is again to gather up the cross. Well, he may be a character, but that save was as good as any. Fantastic save. Thunderous shot from Nicky Bott. Goalkeeper went down. After he made the save, Alice, he'd done a little dance. That delighted the fans behind the goals. Ten minutes to half time. The Manchester United 11 trailing 2 1 to Eric Cantona's international 11. As yet, though, the goal that everyone's come to see has not actually occurred. Mind you, a little bit like that will keep them uh, on the edge of their seat. The juggling skills of Monsieur Fantastique. Look at that from Giggs. Well. David Beckham got one from slightly further out than that. Pelé just missed with one. Ryan Giggs has had a go. Almost on halfway. Pascal Olmeta saw the funny side of it. Angled ball towards Gascoigne. Headed away by David May. Here's Gary Neville. Now Scots, lovely ball, nicely weighted, here's Sheringham, Giggs arriving, it's a deep one towards Beckham, does indeed reach that target, well he's played it into Butts, and not quite the finish, once again the weight of the ball inviting the shot, Beckham, but good defending. Lovely skills from Giggs, getting round Robson, but just plucked out of the air by Olmeta. But, May, but again, teasing ball in, headed away by uh, Festa, and thumped out of harm's way by Olmeta to Papa, who took it beautifully in his strike. Now Cantona, Gascoigne, Cantona, Gascoigne, lovely stuff. The two of them having their own private 1-2 uh, until David Beckham intervened. One thing you never lose, no matter how old you get, is your ball control, your ability to pass the ball. Unfortunately, your legs go, which stops you playing. But there we've seen Papan and Cantona. Well, and almost Beckham providing a super goal which hit the inside of the post and was just casually gathered in by Olmeta. When you're talking about players who never lose their touch, I suppose in ten years time the likes of Ryan Giggs and David Beckham won't have lost theirs either. Super header, inside of the post, no Russian linesman, no goal. What a fabulous move that was and uh, they are the Brian Robson and uh, Eric Cantona of the modern-day Man United side. And this is Giggs and Beckham. Here's Giggs. No offside. David Beckham. Well, that was uh, very clever thinking. He saw Pascal Almeida stray towards the penalty spot thinking the cross was coming and he gave a little wag of the finger to the goalkeeper saying don't stay too far away from your goal or I'll try and score 
wonderful vision there by Beckham ready to cross the ball into the middle to Bott sees the goalkeeper off his line quick as a flash quick thinking shot at goals that would have been some goal if it had gone in the back of the net here's Robson into Darlene oh it's a real chance here great save Hughes' header Nick Culkin flying across the goal fabulous stuff little ball down the side by Robson guided in by Darlene header was goal bound until that and he's there again Nick Culkin will remember that save for an awful long time that was superb from the young 20 year old keeper Ryan Giggs Dummy by Sheringham, lovely play by Sheringham, great finish by Scholes, that was a terrific goal and the partnership between Sheringham and Scholes carving out a goal that I'm sure would have broken down any defence anywhere in the world. Wonderful work goal, lovely ball from Ryan Gates into Sheringham, into Scholes, fantastic, how many times have we seen Scholes scoring goals like that? It makes it look so easy, goalkeeper advancing, he chips it over him, I haven't seen a better player at Old Trafford at doing that. Here's Giggs. We're in stoppage time at the end of this uh, terrific first half. Four goals already to save up. And fittingly, two for each side. And this man, Pascal Olmeta, and this man, Paul Scholes, has been at the hub of most things that have happened. And that is half-time, a fabulous first half. Eric Cantona has enjoyed himself, Alex Ferguson too. Goal Attention shared equally. Not quite yet the goal, not quite yet the moment that everyone's come to see with Eric Cantona, but still fabulous entertainment provided by the international side and Manchester United. It's two all at half-time. And tonight it is an au revoir for Eric Cantona, but he will do so in the number seven of Manchester United. David Beckham, I think, has donned the number 16 jersey in order for Cantona to become the magnificent seven once again. And I think Paul Scholes is the man who has made way to ensure that the au revoir will indeed be in that famous shirt. Just for the record, Manchester United have replaced their goalkeeper too. Nick Culkin has just had a half and he's being replaced by Paul Gibson, another young keeper on the box here at Old Trafford. The other substitution, of course, you already know. And you'll know every time he touches the ball without me having to tell you. Well, so far we've had all the entertainment that we were hoping for. We've had four goals, we've had plenty of incident few things to smile about only one thing missing the goal are we to get it from Eric Cantona here's Butt here's Cantona almost threaded it through for uh, Butt who'd continue the run forward Papin the offside flag is up halting the international 11's move forward Another young fellow who's had very limited opportunities, but uh, certainly coming through the ranks. Young Paul Gibson. Here's Giggs, looking for Beckham. Wins the corner. Headed away by Gianluca Festa. swings that corner in great header by Sheringham only inches over he really is a lovely timer of a ball in the air met that beautifully on the forehead just couldn't direct it down Sheringham just over the top
clip over the top from uh, Mark Wilson that is a young man from Manchester United squad who has uh, come onto the field to take part on the shirt of the black and white stripes of the visitors and nearly scored too well as expected Alistair Alex is resting one or two of his players for Saturday very important game for at West Ham they need to pick up the form and he's taken off people like Nicky Bott David Beckham and quite rightly he's putting on a few young players to give them a sample of the atmosphere that he hopes will sample for the next 10 years at Old Trafford yeah, always a sensible policy Brian Robson's making way to a rapturous reception and another Manchester United player has gone on to the international, international select 11 John Curtis This is uh, always the case with friendlies, but uh, certainly still plenty of entertainment to be enjoyed. And we still await the Eric Cantona goal. It'll come, Alistair. Believe me, it will come. <laughs> it's a very friendly atmosphere here, and uh, the players have come off the field. They're giving out autographs, as you saw a moment earlier. And that's nice to see. Now, his butt. Looking for Cantona! Lou said it would come, and it did. Well, the flag's gone up, and the, and the referee's disallowed it. Lou, what's going on? Alex can't believe it, can you? Unbelievable. <laughs> Worst refereeing decision ever at Old Trafford. You well, tried telling 56,000 people that was offside, they won't believe you. Well, I know Eric Cantona's gone into uh, being an actor, He'll read a script and uh, he'll know what his part is and he'll not expect that particular part to change too much. But uh, I don't think the assistant referee on this side and the referee have read the same script. Meanwhile, the International eleven are about to make it 3-2, which is uh, perhaps uh, doubly disappointing for the United fans. Martin Darlene has helped himself to a goal, but the talking point will still remain why that goal at the other end didn't count. Unbelievable. What a I've never seen a decision like that in a, in a kickabout match or a friendly match, whatever <laughs> you want to call it. Normally they allow someone like Eric Cantona the benefit of the doubt. I wasn't so sure he was offside anyway, but uh, the linesman on this side has spoiled the fun, I'm afraid, for 56,000. He has indeed. And within 45 seconds, Eric Cantona watched Martin Darlene score the goal. Posse, Eric Cantona, now Jordi Cruyff, all oh, the deflections taking it into the goal and United are back at 3-3 three, three. Jordi Cruyff enjoying himself, another player who's trying to get matches under his belt had all sorts of injury problems and he'll enjoy scoring even if it was via a deflection Here's Martin Dali. Oh, good effort. Oh, fantastic goal. And it's the youngster, Mark Wilson. Well, Mark Wilson there has produced as good a goal as I think I've ever seen at Old Trafford. That was fantastic stuff. And it's a Manchester United youngster. Look at that. Wonderful shot, wonderful goal. He'll get some stick in the dressing room at the end of the game, <laughs> scoring against Manchester United. Vahewa. Interception by Wes Brown. Again. Now Prunier, Papin, Wilson selling the tricks, Papin's offside, he just, it was a borderline decision, oh well actually uh, it wasn't even borderline that one was it, 
it was probably less offside than the, um, the one that was given and Eric's Cantona's goal was ruled out earlier oh now here's the chance and the goal Alec Notman 17 rather than 7 getting on the score sheet there and Alec Notman makes it 4-4 I don't think Pascal is going to be too pleased at conceding four goals, is he, Luke? He certainly won't be. I thought for one moment young Dortmund was going to lay the ball back to Eric Cantona. But no, he said, no, this is my night. As well as yours, I'm going to score at Old Trafford in front of 56,000 people. And he certainly has done. Wonderful night for the young side. Chasing. Just halted in his path by Prunier. Curtis. Right then. Here we go, Pascal. Just 11 men to beat. There's one. There's two. Jordi Croix, St. Tumble. That's eight left gone for the return from Joel Cantona he's still inside there will he keep it off <laughs> I feel like Stuart Hall on it's a knockout that was fantastic Pascal Almeida is the star of the show <laughs> for words really <laughs> well they've got a mascot here Fred the Red uh, I don't think this guy needs a suit I think uh, Almeida the Greater really a goalkeeper Alston is he <laughs> <laughs> lovely ball <laughs> well the, I think the um, the goal will stand on Mater well out of his uh, area he was desperate for a flag to go up the flag didn't go up and Phil Neville scored <laughs> look at old Mater here I don't think this is in the coaching manual. <laughs> a good goal nonetheless. Luke, can you think of anything to say about that? <laughs> Not a lot, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's cost him the game, hasn't he? <laughs> He's never a goalkeeper, Alistair. Where does he come from? Though? Tell us the truth. <laughs> Excuse me. Could have been out again this wonderful game of football which has been everything that this 55,000 uh, crowd wanted plenty of goals there's just one thing missing and that is that Eric Cantona hasn't scored yet but I think one thing that the crowd will want is for this fella to score here he comes it's on target oh my word <laughs> well Alex Ferguson loved it he wasn't far off. Well, he's the most popular man in Old Trafford now, and that's saying something. My goodness, that was so close. Did he get a touch on it, the keeper? Oh, possibly. Oh, who'd begrudge him a goal tonight? Oh, dear. Right. There is still one ingredient missing on this wonderful evening. And here is the man who can provide it. Eric Cantona. He's done one. He's trying to do another. The cross is clear. And 
Cantona to take the corner. Look at the flash bulbs going off all around him as he went to take that corner. Oh, I think he went for goal there and almost crept it in the near post. Well, the keeper's given up now. <laughs> he must be exhausted. The deflection reaches Phil Neville. There's no flag. Where's Eric? There's nowhere to be seen. Phil never looked up to find Eric Cantona. Cantona had just taken the corner and wasn't in the area. You're spot on there, Alistair. Phil never looked up. He's begging Eric to run 20 yards. Eric failed to do it. I think he's exhausted Eric himself. I mean, he might be exhausted watching Omega. looking for the one-two but it's not going to come to him Nicky Butts makes it 6-4 well, I've never seen a goalkeeper more unbothered by conceding six goals on an evening his defence just opened up in front of him Cantona involved in the builder in it went from Phil Neville Nicky Butts sold the keeper the dummy and into the corner she went I think uh, the way it's going it might be a 90th minute surely a penalty might be the, uh, the most dramatic way for which uh, Eric to say farewell well it would be but the way things are going on mate will probably save it now, Eric's in the middle here is anyone going to pick him out oh the flag's going up I think the referee's way play on this time here's Cantona is this to be the moment? Prudier dives in front of him. Cantona's round on Mater. There it is. It's not exactly the biggest surprise of the night, Alistair. But it's been worth waiting for. Up to now, Almeida's still on the show. Old Trafford is busting at the seams now. They've seen what they've wanted to see all night. Eric Cantona back at Old Trafford, doing what he did for a number of years, scoring goals. I've, uh, I've just worked out what the script said. We'll wait till the seventh goal is about to be scored. A magnificent seven will score the magnificent seven. And here it is. Past his brother, past Prudier, past uh, young Wilson, past Almeida. And a little scoop over Prunier. Is the time for a hat trick? We've had his farewell goal. Are we going to have one more? It's come screaming into the back post. He wants it on the far stick. Nicky Butt will try and find him. Here's Cantona! Pascal didn't want to be beaten for an eighth time. <laughs> well, it opened up for Eric Cantona. One or two stood off him, but Almeida made the save. Here's Cruyff. Oh, good skills from Cruyff. Cantona wants it. Cruyff's looking for him. But it was actually Notman who stole it and got the finish. I think everybody's looking for Eric now. This young fella helps himself to another goal. And good luck to him. Well, I've seen Alex Notman many a time in the reserves. Good goal scorer. There's no way he's going to let that ball go past him to Eric Cantona. He's going to get another goal. Two goals for the youngster. The scriptwriters are to have their happy ending. Eric Cantona will finish the game with a dribble past three or four defenders and a chip over the top of Olmeta. Picking him 
himself up gingerly now is Olmeta assembling his wall or is Olmeta making it easy for Cantona to score the free kick he's hiding behind the goalpost Alice to draw your own conclusion from that Eric Cantona to finish off the entertainment not quite but it hasn't spoiled the evening by any stretch of the imagination 55,000 people get to their feet as one and applaud the end of a fantastic career these Manchester United fans have come to pay tribute to the families of those who were bereaved 40 years ago in the Munich air disaster but also to say au revoir to one of their favourite sons, Eric Cantona. We've had 12 goals, we've had fabulous entertainment, we've had all sorts of things to talk about. And of course, above all, we've had a sellout crowd who have been royally entertained and who will provide financial help for the families of those bereaved in that awful disaster 40 years ago. It has quite simply been the most fitting of evenings in every respect. For the record, Manchester United 8, Cantona 11-4. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Munich Memorial Committee and beneficiaries, I wish to thank most sincerely everybody who has made tonight possible and such a very special occasion. First of all, first of all, you, the supporters, for such a magnificent attendance. Manchester United Football Club for all their cooperation. Alex Ferguson, Brian Kidd, and the United players. The former players the former players who have so willingly returned and done so well to me. The French footballers, the friends, the friends and family of one of the finest ever Manchester United players who found his football home at Old Trafford and so graciously agreed to come for his final game tonight in honour of those other Manchester United greats who gave their lives for this club 40 years ago at Munich and will never be forgotten. Ladies and gentlemen, Eric Cantona.
It's a special night for me. It was a wonderful feeling. I thank you all to come, and uh, I hope to see you soon. Yes, I quit football because I lost my passion for the game. I'm sorry, I gave everything but, uh, for 10 years. I had uh, five wonderful season here, the best one of my career, and uh, I love you all very much. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Eric Cantona. I don't suppose you could expect a lot more from a, a match of this type, can you? No, I thought it was a fantastic night, I really did. It was really, you know, you get your testimonial, I've, I've seen before testimonial games in the past and it's nil and nil or one each or something like that. That's the right way to have a game. And the players express themselves, enjoy themselves and give a good show. And of course the important thing was the fans here, 55,000, they've contributed and they've seen their hero. Well, they just, I think they They've done the, the Manchester United Football Club proud tonight, the supporters, because they've shown what uh, the Munich has meant to everyone, and it was a wonderful turnout with them, it's, and I'm really pleased. 40 years on, I mean, everything that was on show tonight was fitting, wasn't it? Yes, it was. I mean, it was a, it was a great night, and in memory of a tragic uh, part of the club's history, and those great players who had no loss to the club. And their families were here tonight, which is very special for them. They're very, very emotional. There's a lot of older supporters who were here tonight who, who shared all the, the grief way back 40 years ago. And then you've got the younger ones who came to see Eric. Uh, and we brought young players on tonight who just like Busby Bays 40 years ago got their chance at 17, 18 years of age. So it was a really fitting night.